Hey everyone, Jerry from Llama Index here, and today we'll walk you through a very simple multimodal report generation example. So in this notebook and video, we'll show you how to build a very simple multimodal report generator over a single slide deck. And we'll specifically highlight structured outputs as one of the key ingredients to help you get um, a multimodal structured uh, report generation outputs. As a key ingredient to help you get a structured report. Help me out. Hey everyone, Jerry from Llama Index here. And in this video, we'll show you how to build a very simple example of multimodal report generation from a single slide deck. Uh, and so in this video and in this cookbook, uh, we'll show you how to use one of the key ingredients of report generation, which is structured outputs to define a valid schema and ensure that the output or the generated report follows a predefined format. And so besides that, you know, the architecture is actually very simple. We don't really do any RAG. We don't index like a huge knowledge base. The whole example is to show you how you can, you know, use structured outputs to generate something that kind of looks like a report over a single slide deck. And then in future videos, we'll show you how to build more complex agentic architectures. So in this notebook, we'll just primarily do two things. First, we'll do indexing. We will parse a slide deck, uh, and I'll show you what the slide deck is in just a bit, and store both the text chunks as well as links to the image screenshots of the slide deck. And then this pipeline will be able to take in a user task as input. So it'll take in some sort of user question. And then, you know, instead of just generating a simple text-based response, it'll generate a detailed response that contains interleaving text and images from the slide deck. So basically the output looks a little bit fancier than just plain text. And we'll show you how to, how to do that. And the key to this is basically through structured outputs. And this starts getting at one of the key ingredients that helps make report generation possible, which again is using the clever definition of different types of schemas to output a report that conforms to what you would expect uh, a report to look like. And so this pipeline, again, operates over just a single document. It does not do retrieval over a, no a large knowledge base. Uh, and you know we'll do that in subsequent videos, but you're free to adapt this notebook to something that's a little bit more fancy in nature as well. So we'll get started. And basically, the uh, slide deck that's in question is basically this Conigo Phillips uh, uh, investor report. If you've seen some of our other talks, you'll see that we use this example as well. And we basically like this example because you know it has a lot of uh, components that basically make up a complex document. So there's a bunch of text. You can see um, it's the layout's oftentimes non-standard. So you can have like a chart over here. You can have some text annotations. You can have a pie chart. You know, three column layout. You can have a table. And if we go into uh, one of the uh, aspects that I want to show, which is you know this slide, I'll show you what the parse output looks like in just a bit. Is basically a bar chart, um, and you know contains a bunch of text and captions, and then industry growth focus, strategy reset, and so just a, a few different visual elements floating around. And so going back to the notebook, uh, we'll walk through some of the uh, next sections to actually show you how to parse this document, uh, index it, and then ask questions over it. So if you haven't done so already, feel free to actually set up an observability tool. Um, in this example, you know, we'll show our, one of our basic integrations with Arise Phoenix, which we call Llama Trace. Um, and so all you need is to create an account and insert an API key. And then as we go through some of the sections, you'll be able to see the queries and their traces logged. So we'll download the data, which is this investor slide deck linked right here. And then we'll set up the models um, and in this video, you know, we're going to be using uh, Tax Embedding 3 Large and GP4O from OpenAI. Next, we are going to use Llama Parse as one of the core tools to actually parse this slide deck into something that's a little bit more interpretable in plain text. And so we will specifically use the multimodal mode from Llama Parse. Um, we are going to use Llama Parse with Markdown mode, um, but also using Anthropic Sonnet 3.5. Um, and you know, use vendor multimodal model equals true. And so multi, like visual LLMs these days are great tools. They're fantastic tools at actually being able to recognize different elements within a document. There are of course downfalls. You know, they're oftentimes not very good at understanding super large walls of text. 
for that, we have Llama Parse Premium, which blends the best of both worlds. But in, in either case, we'll use multimodal mode for now. And then you can see here, you know, we basically just call parser.getJSON result from this data. And we're basically calling the parser and getting back the full outputs. Um, and once this completes, I will show you in just a bit on what the outputs look like. Okay. And so we will take a look at slide 11, right, at index 10. And so this is what the page looks like, commitment to discipline reinvestment, right? If I go back right here, you can see this is the bar chart that this slide is, um, uh, that's slide 11. And we're able to parse that into this table right here. And so we are able to parse this bar chart into a markdown table. Um, and so this is part of the capabilities of Llama Parse. And then moving on, you know, we will be able to call get images to not only just, you know, have the text, which is right here, but also have the associated image screenshots downloaded into a folder called data images. And this is important because this basically takes a full screenshot of every page and allows us to, you know, actually uh, bring up images as sources in the final output in addition to text. And this is one of the ingredients that allows us to generate what we call like a multimodal report. So we'll wait for this to complete. Okay, looks like it's done. In this next section, we're gonna help you set up and build a basic summary index over the text that we parse with Llama Parse. So we're gonna create a set of what we call text nodes and text nodes are basically a core abstraction in Llama index and it basically is a chunk. Um, and a text node contains both text as well as surrounding metadata. So we are going to define a function or some helper functions to basically create a set of text nodes from this, these parse text outputs that we got from Llama Parse. Um, and so get text nodes basically takes in the JSON dictionaries, which are the parse text that we got from Llama Parse, and then also takes in the directory of image uh, screenshots that we you know, um, dumped all the image screenshots to, and then basically creates a text node with both the text uh, right here, you can see parse text markdown equals markdown text, along with a link to the corresponding page screenshot. So you can read for yourself like what this function actually does, but I'll give you a sense of what the actual content of a text node is once we run it. And so once I scroll down here and I do print text nodes .get content, you can see you know the page number is 11. Um, the image path uh, corresponds to the, the image screenshot right of page 11. Um, and so if you open up this image, you'll see the actual screenshot of this page, but it also contains the parse text markdown. And so when we think about, you know, indexing or, or storing this in general, the overall unit that you're storing is this text, right? And this, if you put it into a vector database, would be the thing that you embed and retrieve. But because it also has a link to the image path, this means that during synthesis, when you actually try to um, generate the final output, you can basically, if you have access to the image file, also choose the render of the image file too, and you can feed it to the LLM or you could also show it as part of the results. And so that's actually what we do in this notebook. In this example right here, um, or in this cell, we are going to build what we call like a summary index over these text nodes. A summary index is basically, um, it's, it's a pretty straightforward index and all we have to do is, I'm just gonna reload this right here. Um, so go in and delete this and I'll do this again. Um, so a summary index is basically um, just, it's not really a vector index. It doesn't really uh, embed your, your nodes and put them into a vector database. Um, it, it kind of, you know, you can debate whether it actually is an index. It's basically just a container for your nodes. And then if you want to ask uh, this index a question, it'll just stuff all the nodes from its index um, as context into the LLM prompt to help answer your question. And so it's a pretty convenient abstraction for basically any sort of summarization task. Basically, once it indexes a set of nodes, for any subsequent question you're gonna ask, it will try to stuff all those nodes into the prompt to help answer that question. And one of the nice things about a summary index that, that we do on the LAM index side is that you don't really have to worry about the pesky prompt window limits. If, for instance, the text nodes actually go over the prompt window, will automatically chunk up the nodes and do some sort of like hierarchical summarization approach or sequential create and refine summarization approach over the nodes uh, and still give you back the answer. So we help abstract away some of those details under the hood, but basically, you know, we create this summary index and 
we will now build a query engine to start asking questions over this index. And so we are going to use Llama index abstractions to build what we call a structured query engine. And this is the crux of this video, basically, um, because you know we've we've kind of indexed the single file in a pretty simple manner. Um, we're going to stuff uh, basically all the pages in to generate some sort of allow you to generate some sort of summaries over this the, over this document. Um, but here we are going to define a pedantic schema to define what the output of this query engine should look like. And so in contrast to if you just use the summary index or vector index in the standard forms, it will output plain text. Here we define a structured output schema and attach it to the LLM. And so by attaching the structured schema to the LLM, then by using that structured LLM, it will, also, it will always output the response in a structured format that tries to adhere to the schema. And then, then you know, we actually have some nice abstractions where you can then plug this LLM into this overall summary query engine and generate a structured response. The report output is the overall uh, cl uh, wrapper class that we're going to define. And it's basically the data model for producing a report. Uh, the report output is a pedantic class, you know, and you can see it contains a list of both text blocks and image blocks. And so this is how we're going to define the schema in the form of pedantic classes. And you can see uh, the overall output or the output schema can have like nested inner schemas too. So this has a list of both text and image blocks. And then you can see that, you know, a text block basically just has a single field, a uh, text string, and you can add a description of the text for this block. The image block basically has a file path field with a description file path to the image. Um, for convenience, and this is just for the, the last bit of this video, we're also going to define a render function, which given you know, a report output object will help render this as HTML on the page. And so it will render the text blocks, but also more importantly, the images. There are ways to basically translate this uh, pedantic schema into some tool calling or function calling interface um, that LLMs support and basically, allow, uh, basically force them um, you know, either implicitly or explicitly to output their responses in a way that conforms to this schema. And this is made possible because most LLMs these days are capable of function calling. Um, and there's basically a trick you can do with function calling to basically um, treat, uh, tell the LLM to output something um, like a function, but really it's the schema of a pedantic class. And then it'll be able to call that function, so to speak, but really it's just helping you generate structured outputs for you. And we help you abstract away some of those complexities or details. Um, you know, there's plenty of resources out there to show you how it actually works under the hood if you, if you want to go in and, and actually see what's going on. Um, but really the high level idea is that you can take the schema that you define and attach it to an LLM. So here you see we define an LLM called OpenAI GPT-4.0 with this given system prompt. So this is just our standard LLM abstraction. You know, the system prompt is basically, uh, you know, your report generation assistant, you're responsible for producing something with interleaving text and images. Um, but here you see we call LLM.asStructuredLLM and it takes in an output class report output. And by basically binding the um, uh, pedantic class to the LLM, you get back this LLM wrapper uh, or a structured LLM. And you can plug in this structured LLM into the query engine as opposed to the regular LLM. And if you try to you know, call the structured LLM, it'll be able to give you back outputs and um, that the outputs will be uh, structured as opposed to raw text. Um, and so what this means is that when you plug this LLM into this query engine, um, because this query engine is responsible for using the LLMs, stuffing it with context and generating outputs from it, it basically enforces or almost guarantees that the outputs will have to be structured. Um, so let me see if I can just show you like a very simple example. Um, I'll do this, uh, hello, generate a story of uh, apples. So you can actually see here, and I'll just run this again, um, that it basically gives you a completion response. Um, and this is just calling the LLM by itself. 
but you can see the text actually is a JSON dictionary. And this JSON dictionary adheres to the schema that we just defined. It has blocks, there's text, and then you know there's no images because we, we didn't really specify um, any paths to images. Um, so that would make sense. But this is the overall idea. Um, the LLM has to output stuff in accordance with the report, uh, report output schema. So given that very toy example, where I'm gonna actually plug this LLM into the query engine, and then basically ask, give me a summary of the financial performance of the Alaska International segment versus the lower 48 segment. I'm gonna run this right here. What it's doing right now is when you ask this question, um, we are going through literally all the nodes within the document. Um, so you know all 50-ish nodes in the slide deck and then stuffing it into the prompt window of the LLM and then giving you back a response. The response is going to be uh, a, what we call like a structured response. Um, so it's called a pedantic response. And it's precisely because we defined a structured LLM. And so uh, instead of just pure unstructured text, it's going to be giving you back the actual pedantic object. And you can see here the type of response that response is report output. And we are going to directly call render on this output and show you, you know, basically what the output is. You can see here, there's a first text block right here. The financial performance can be summarized as the following. And then this is the image that is linked to, uh, that, that decides to generate because this is basically, you know, an image that supports the, the answer right here. And then here is more text. Um, you can see there's a little bit of misformatting right here, but that's fine. But basically it's, it's another text block that shows you the overall financial performance. And it's basically derived from this table right here. Then there's another uh, image screenshot on free cash flow. And then there is the final uh, text block on the lower 48 segment. And so this is a basic example of a report, so to speak, because we're able to generate something with interleaving text and images. And it use, and, and maybe one underrated piece is to make this possible, you actually have to screenshot the page. Um, and Lama Parse makes that very easy for you to do because you just have to call it through an API. Let's try one more example. Um, give me a summary of whether you think the financial produ productions are stable, and if not, what are the potential risk factors? And so support your research with uh, sources. And so we are going to um, you know, wait for this response and then wait for the generation. Okay, it completed, and we will take a look at the render response. So again, we see a text block. The financial productions appear to be stable, sort of supported by a comprehensive strategy. Here is like you know an image showing you the the tender plan um, of, of you know here's the bar chart and key financial metrics include you know a strong outlook, free projected cash flow, and this and and this is basically the image screenshot that supports that. So that's kind of cool because it basically shows you the image sources along with the text. And then there are potential risk factors that could impact these productions. So that's basically it for this video. Um, here, we basically just showed you how to use this core concept of structured outputs to help you generate a multimodal report. Um, again, it's not, it's not very agentic in nature, but um, it does take advantage of a core concept of structured outputs. Um, it uses a single document so far, and basically the idea is to help you generate a multimodal almost report-like summary of a single document. In future videos, we'll show you how to do something that's a little bit more agentic in nature, um, but hopefully this gives you a sense of how you can do some initial things to make your output a little bit more sophisticated. Thanks, and see you next time.